Good evening and welcome to Zion Lutheran Church. I am Pastor C.J. Betcher. Thank you for joining us for our midweek Advent services. Uh, just <clears throat> by way of announcement before we get uh, rolling this evening, um, you'll see in front of you uh, on the screen our schedule for the Advent season. Um, we're starting our midweek Advent services today, uh, December 2nd, and they will run through December 23rd. Uh, those services will be posted at the latest by 6 p.m. on all of our platforms on YouTube, on Facebook, and on our website. So please do uh, be a part of that and catch those. Um, also, we will be having uh, Bible and Beverages is returning, our Advent edition. We are... Um, working through, as our Advent theme, Word Become Flesh, uh, the prologue of John, the first chapter. And so we will be taking a look at that during our Advent services, but also during our Bible and Beverages time, uh, going through some questions. So if you would like uh, to be a part of that, it's on Zoom. Uh, you can contact um, the church office or myself and <clears throat> get uh, a link and some login information to be a part of that conversation. Uh, the uh, alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages are welcome. Uh, intentionally leave it a bit vague if uh, tea or uh, seltzers or uh, your speed. So those are all of the announcements I have at this time. So we will continue in our worship with our invocation and opening litany. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. The fullness of God. Emmanuel, God with us, is here this night. Amen. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not overcome it. Those who have sat in darkness. On them light has shined. In him is life, the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not overcome it. Please join in our opening hymn, Joyous Light of Heavenly Glory, ELW 561. We'll sing all of the verses. Our, Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Our first reading this evening comes from the ninth chapter of Isaiah, beginning with the first verse. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exalt when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor you have broken, as on the day of May. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Our Gospel reading tonight comes from the first chapter of John, beginning with the first verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. On January 19, 2006, the New Horizons spacecraft launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida and hurtled into outer space toward its ultimate destination, Pluto and the Kuiper Belt, a vast field of planetoids and debris just beyond our solar system. It wasn't until July of 2015 that the craft finally reached its destination over three billion miles from Earth. After completing its mission, it kept going out into the depths of space to, among other things, photograph nothing. That is nothing but dark interstellar blackness. What the scientists found raised more questions than it answered. You see, after they factored out distant points of light from stars and other galaxies, they found something surprising. There was light they couldn't account for. Was it from some other unknown celestial sources? A more exotic theory suggests that it may emanate from an unknown source, perhaps dark matter, an unseen form of matter that seems to have a gravitational force but cannot be seen. Whatever the case, it would seem that even in the darkest reaches of space, light shines in the darkness. This week, we began our journey through Lent, a season of waiting, of hopeful expectation. But it is also a time of somber reflection, much like its cousin, the season of Lent. 
It is a time of deep longing for Christ's return, of seeing the world as it is, in all its violence, suffering, and grief, and longing for wholeness and healing, for the fulfillment of creation. We say with deep yearning and anguished hearts the words found at the end of Revelation, the end of God's holy word for us. Come, Lord Jesus. It seems fitting that Advent comes to us each year in a season of dying light. We are made more keenly aware of the evil and darkness that pervades our world and the yawning chasm between how things are and how God wills them to be. The Germans call it Weltschmerz, world hurt. Yet, Advent is also a season in which we remember that darkness is not all that there is. Just as the deep reaches of just as in the deep reaches of space there is yet light, so in Jesus, the light of the world, we see a light that shines in our darkness, no matter how deep or seemingly impenetrable. We remember that in Christ we have a light that no darkness can extinguish, no darkness can overcome. That is the promise that gives our hope meaning and purpose. We do not wait, we do not hope in vain. No virus, no calamity, not even death can take that promise. that hope from us. Like Voyager 1 and 2, the satellite New Horizons continues to explore the vast beyond, now four billion miles from where it started here on Earth. What will it find? It's hard to know for sure. But it would seem that no matter what, it, what is out there, there will always be light. In the name of Jesus. Please join me in professing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people. During these, uh, this time of prayer, I will offer up a petition and invite you to quietly reflect on how you might respond to that petition, leaving some time um, for silent reflection. And after a time of silence, I will lead the congregation into the words, Word become flesh and dwell among us, and I invite you to say that with me at the end of each prayer. So let us pray. 
We come before you with a sorrow or a grief on our heart. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus be with you this night. May he shine light in your darkness, and bring you light. Sending song this evening is All Praise to Thee, My God, this night, 565 in your red ELW hymnal. Gretchen will play three verses. Go in peace. The light of Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.